Right. That's not the pussy cat. This is Merlin. Hello, Merlin. Hello, camera. This is uh, Hatfield. Sorry, this is Hatfield. 2035. Episode 5. It was the early afternoon of the following day. The sticks gazed at the algae green water of the swimming pool. The glass entrance of the building has been smashed in for several years and broken shards of glass carpeted the tiles floor. Not bathing in that, shouted Witch Hazel, to come out looking like the creature from the Black Lagoon. Bumper, the mechanic scratched his head. I'll go down to the basement and see if I can find some way to get the showers and the changing rooms working. The broken tooth smiled. Good idea, he agreed. It's going to take me several hours, huffed the mechanic. The leader of the sticks looked towards his companions. Well, the rest of us will go to the Galleria. Let's see if we can bargain with the scavengers to get some clean clothes. I'll stay here with Bumper, suggested Witch Hazel. Me too, found Gadget. Bumper will probably need my help with their plumbing. The mechanic winked at the spiky head blonde man and chuckled. <laughs> you look like your plumbing might need fixing while we are down there. Gadget blushed. Razor stood behind Broken Tooth. Uh, we'd best take our weapons with us. We don't want the boys being raped before we get to the goods. Pike held Sting's left hand. Don't worry about us, Razor. We can take care of ourselves. Fingers grinned. We've been screwing each other all night anyway. Just to get into practice, he paused. Just remember, I ain't gonna let some ugly fat slob up my arsehole, warned Tag. Broken Tooth smiled at the two teenage boys. Don't worry, lads. All of the scavengers are under the age of 30. <laughs> Most of them are either runaways or abandoned children, left behind when their parents were taken to work to build Gravestown in the city. On the other side of the road, opposite the Galleria, was an enormous 20 feet high barbed wire fence. And on the other side of the border, a row of deserted office buildings abandoned after the economic collapse and dwarfed by ten enormous, twenty-five feet high skyscrapers behind them. Far in the distance, the green lights of the domed City of Hope lit the early evening sky, half hidden by smoke from the Gravestown factory chimneys. Five scavengers stood guard at both entrances of the gallery, a large grey deserted shopping centre, dressed in anoraks, taxi pants and suits plundered from the fashionable retail outlets long since abandoned after the economic collapse of 2017. They were armed with cricket bats, chainsaws and sledgehammers. Their faces tattooed with black ink. They don't look very friendly, do they? asked Razor, turning towards Broken Tooth. The sticks were crouching behind a huge pile of rusty stacked up cars, piled in the car park, abandoned when the petrol dried up 20 years earlier. You stay here with the lads. So you stay here with the lads, suggested the stick leader. I'm going to see if we can make a trade. He handed his silver hammer to his boyfriend. Look after this, he suggested. What if they kill you? asked Razor. <laughs> Broken tooth grinned. I was born in this ghost town, remember? I recognise a couple of the guards. I just hope they still remember me. Broken Tooth approached the entrance of the gallery, his hands held high in the sky. One of the scavengers pointed towards the lone stick approaching from the car park. I know that guy. He looked towards his friend. He used to give me cigarettes when I was a kid. chuckled. He used to be my dealer. Cigarettes were banned in 2015, laughed Knowledge. I remember. He made them himself out of stinging nettles, rolled in pages from old Bibles, explained Kickstart. I thought he was dead. He disappeared years ago. That was the year your mother committed suicide, wasn't it? asked the young scavenger. 
was 29 years old. Knowledge was that was sorry, knowledge was 35. Well, sorry, knowledge was 29. I was only five years old, explains knowledge. Oh, sorry, hang on. So, there, 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 there. I changed my words. Uh, I was only nine years old, explained knowledge. Uh, she couldn't live without her nicotine fix, so she hanged herself. He was the scavenger's chronicler, one of the few who could read and write. Broken Tooth smiled at Kickstart. So, you still remember me, Kick? I'm glad to see that you're still alive. The leader of the sticks turned towards the mountain of Carex and the car park. You can come out now, lads, he shouted. Razor, tag and fingers, walked towards the scavengers. I bought you a present, grins Broken Tooth. Bruiser, one of the scavengers' guards, stared at the two teenagers. He was twenty years old with a shaved head. What do you want for those two chickens? he asked. Fresh clothes, explained Broken Tooth. We have to get into Gravestown. Two of our friends were taken by the press gang a few days ago. Knowledge shook his head. Uh, you'll never get past the guards, he sighed. You're armed with fucking submachine guns. Where's he yawned? Uh, we weren't going to walk through the main entrance, stupid. We we're going to cut a hole in the fence. Kickstart interrupted. It's electrified. You'll be burnt to a crisp as soon as you touch the wire. Broken Tooth scrapped his bearded chin. Gadget might be able to find a way to short circuit the fence, long enough for us to climb through. He's good with technical stuff. He folded his arms across his chest. Kickstart raised his hands. We might be able to distract the guards long enough for your mates to get past them. You can turn off the power at the main fuse box. I think it's just inside the gate. You can hear the engine of a generator when you walk past it. He explained. Razor put his arms around Tag and Finger's shoulders. So, do we have a deal? he asked. Bruiser lowered his sledgehammer. Uh, you'd better come inside and meet the boss. He opened the smashed glass doors of the shopping mall. Broken tooth, tag, fingers and razors followed Bruiser into the building, past a row of long deserted burger bars and restaurants, and up a broken ele and up a broken escalator. Knowledge followed behind them. Kickstart and the Kickstart and the other two guards remained at the entrance, guarding the door. Knowledge pointed to an abandoned cinema on the right hand side. That's our theatre, he chuckled. We act out plays and have concerts in there every night of the week. The Stigs and the two scavengers walked through a glass corridor towards the main shopping mall. Most of the windows were smashed and boarded up with wooden planks and bits of plastic sheeting. A large open fire burned brightly in the central hall of the gallery. A group of young teenage mothers cradling their infants sat around the bonfire cooking the evening meal. Join us for dinner, suggested Bruiser. What do you eat around here, asked Broken Tooth? Rabbits and squirrels, mainly, explained knowledge. This fucking town is full of them. I remember, replied the leader of the sticks. There used to be quite a colony of wild rabbits at the top of Travers Lane. They're all over the place now, laughed Boozer. Not to mention rats, added knowledge. The deserted restaurants are infested with them. <laughs> at least you will never run out of food. Tag smiled, a bored, toothy grin. A group of teenage boys were sitting on the stairs and leaning over the balconies of the shopping mall. Many of them were wearing suits without shirts, bundled from the many fashion stores, or jeans and t-shirts. The women were also well dressed, some in casual wear, others in evening dresses. At well in one end of the bonfire near the stairs sat a young black man in a pinstripe black suit and tie, and wearing sun Ray-Ban sunglasses. Several sofas and armchairs looted from a furniture store surrounded the fire. The sticks approached and broken tooth shook the man's hand. The black man stood up. Everybody round here calls me the boss. He grinned. I understand that you wish to make a trade. 
He was six feet two inches tall and very muscular. Just a little bit shorter than Razor. And he wore a pair of knuckle dusters on his left hand. Fingers and tags stepped forward. The dark skinned boss of the scavengers lowered his ray band sunglasses. His hair was plaited into dreadlocks. He turned his head and looked up to the balcony. Most of the scavengers were under the age of 25, and a couple just over 30. Teenagers and adolescents mainly lined the railings. Boys, girls, and young men who had been abandoned or born in the ghost town since it was closed down in the early 2020s or runaways who had escaped from Gravestown. We're not exactly sex starved around here, laughed the boss. He shrugged his shoulders. Still, if all you want is some clothes, there might be a bit of fun. The scavenger's boss leaned back in his brown leather armchair. Tell you what, he grinned. If your two lads can entertain us in the theatre tonight, we might have a deal. Fingers and tags looked relieved. So, your mates don't want to fuck us them, asked Fingers. The black man laughed. I know I do. But how about a show before the orgy? Just to get us in the mood. What do you suggest, asked Tag? The boss grinned. Oh, two lads. The girls will find you some decent clothes. <coughs> <coughs> and get you scrubbed up. I like a good strip tease before bedtime. Grunt had sat down in an old flower pattern sofa next to the boss. You got plumbing here, he asked. No, replied the boss. We wash in rainwater. Three young teenage girls approached Tag and Fingers. Come with us, boys, they giggled. We'll get you ready for your performance. The orgy lasted all night and well into the following day. The six put their clean clothes into carrier bags and walked back towards the swimming pool. Bumper and Gadget had managed to fix one of the showers in the changing room, and they all freshened up. Chapter 6, Gravestown. The stick's hair was cut short, and they were all clean-shaven. As well as being the gang's housekeeper, which Hazel was good with a pair of scissors, Bumper opened one of the carrier bags. The scavengers have ripped us off. He tipped all of the clothes into a stack. Everything's beige and grey, he frowned. I know, replied Fingers. Haven't you ever been to Gravestown? What do you mean, asked the sticks mechanic. They don't like colours, explained Fingers. We would attract too much attention if we wore anything else. Broken Tooth picked up a pair of grey trousers from the pile and put them on. A few of the boss's lads are going to cause a disturbance outside the main gate tomorrow night. He looks towards the bumper. You and Gadget are going to have to sneak past the armed guards and turn off the main power supply. Long enough for you to cut a hole in the fence. Make sure it's big enough to climb through without being electrocuted on our way out. He paused. Fingers tag. Me and Razor will wait near the Comet Roundabout on this side of the fence. I'm coming too, hot with Hazel, wearing a beige skirt and grey cardigan. Tinker is my son, after all. It's going to be very dangerous, warned Broken Tooth. We might not get out alive. The young woman hugged her old friends. Since when has this world been safe to live in? I know the risk. It was nearly midnight. Of course.